and welcome to another ASMR video. Today I'm going to be looking at a program from the first match I ever went to at the Old Wembley. In fact, the only match I went to at the Old Wembley, and it was the auto windscreen shield final between AFC Bournemouth and Grimsby Town. This is now a competition called the EFL Trophy, I think. Um, it was back then in the day. It was between the teams in the third and fourth tier generally. Um, Bournemouth made it to the final this year. Bournemouth being my local team, not the team I support. Um, although I did spend a lot of time going to Bournemouth games when I was younger. Um, but now they've got sort of good and famous. Um, I've lost interest in them quite a bit. Um, I used to think they were a real community club and I remember putting my pound into the bucket as it was going around Dean Court um, when trying to save the club back in, I don't know it was, nine, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Um, but anyway, I went to this game with my dad and uh, Bournemouth lost 2-1. I wasn't really a massive Bournemouth fan and I quite liked football and I quite liked Bournemouth, but um, it was just nice to go to the Wembley, although... What a terrible stadium. Like, we had concrete big pillars in front of us and that. It's no wonder they knocked it down and built it again. Anyway, I'm looking through this program just so we can see if there's any nice nostalgic uh, things from the late 90s uh, maybe advertised in the program. I bought this at the time, obviously, on the day. Uh, what £3.50 it was. Uh, I've had to pay £5 for it again. In fact, I paid £10 because I bought my dad a copy as well uh, from my local football uh, memorabilia shop. Um, I've not actually opened it. This is genuinely not opened. I haven't opened my dad's copy either. And to be fair, probably no, neither has he known it. But anyway, we can have a look at it and see if it's any good or not. Stadium 75 years. This was only probably what, two years before the last game of Wembley. I think the last game of Wembley was in about September 2000 when uh, England lost to Germany 1 0 in the rain and Dimar Hamann scored the winner. So this was, yeah, two years before that. So obviously plans were already afoot to um, get rid of Wembley and rebuild it. I might have to zoom out. I'll just see. We might be okay. Try and zoom out just a little bit. Without zooming in. What a mistake. Let's zoom out a little bit. Oh, no, I've gone back to normal. There we go, try that. Let me fit it all in the picture. I think so, I think so. Hopefully you can read it okay. Apologies again for the uh, the light. How dare the sun shine in the UK. So, of course, we've got an advert for Auto Windscreen, which is fair enough, seeing as they're sponsoring the trophy. I don't know what happened to Auto Windscreen. Whether they, like, they're still going, I don't really know. I know that at the time, Auto Windscreen was, like, the place for um, glass repairs and that, because I thought if they're big enough to sponsor this, you know, they must be pretty big. But, you know, growing up and uh, becoming an adult and having radio on in the car on the way to work and hearing autoglass repair, autoglass replace, bang on, autoglass repair, autoglass replace. Sorry, that was terrible. But anyway, you can't do an impression of someone when you whisper it anyway, can you? But that autoglass then became a big thing. Actually, having said that, I'm sure autoglass sponsored Chelsea at one point in the 90s. So I don't know, maybe there's a massive rivalry, who knows? Anyway, that's not what we're here for. Let's move on. So we have a timetable of the day. 
I definitely didn't stay for the trophy presentation, I know that much. Laurie McMenemy there presented it. A man known for being absolutely useless as England coach. I'm not sure if he was assistant or coach, I think he was coach. Uh, on that do I not like that document documentary about uh, Graham Taylor. Coca-Cola, that's put classic football league symbol. So it's got auto end screens about Donated or invested on one million in football. It's actually quite hard to read this article. You probably get it even worse on the video. Due to the background, it's a terrible choice. And to make it worse, they've got the colours there. What a strange choice that is. So head to head, we've got Russell Beardsmore and Mark Lever. Obviously, Mon Russell Beard's more famous for being at Manchester United. Because his beard's more 29, that's all. Wow. Going through this, you can really appreciate that Bournemouth were really a quite small team. I was growing up and I was going to see them quite a few times uh, in the 98-99 season the season after this I saw them every every other week at home and they, you know, they were they weren't a very big team you know they got relegated, they nearly went bust um, saw them in Cardiff at the Millennium Stadium that was probably the best match I've ever been to again, I, I'm not actually a fan of Bournemouth but I supported my local team when I was younger. Um, as soon as I could afford to go and was allowed to go on my own, I, I used to go. Uh, but looking through this, you'll appreciate that Bournemouth is like you know a small team. Now it's easy to go, Carl. Look, Bournemouth, yeah, you know, you know, there was a Premier League team, established Premier League team, really. But if you told me back in '98 that Bournemouth would be Premier League, I would have thought not a chance for them to even get into the, what was then. Possibly in Division 1, but it's now the Championship would have been just insane talk, absolutely insane. So for them to be where they are, I know that money's helped of course, but even for them to even have money would have been, you know, when I used to go, the away fans used to get rained on. You know, there was no cover on the away, away end. Uh, it was glorious football, you know, you used to go down there, if you get in there first... You run to the front of the stand so you could bend over and touch the pitch. So yeah, just saw some great times. And I don't recognise Bournemouth as a club now as the same club. It's a shame, really. But anyway, that's me being nostalgic, which is completely on brand. But let's carry on looking at the book. So we've got Adam for Honda there. About their VTEC engine. Agent, Bournemouth manager at the time. I don't know if that picture's been flipped, but it's not often you get the badge on that side and the um, kit manufacturer on that side. Graham Taylor, absolute legend. He was manager of Watford this season. I've just read up that they were um, dominating the Division 2, the, the, the league that both these teams were in. It's crazy, look. We got um, Burnley boss Chris Waddle. Didn't even know that Chris Waddle was a manager. We've got some adverts here for local Bournemouth companies. This ball was right to Wembley with Ian Cox. He was a great defender. Beat uh, Leighton Orient, 
Bristol City. Home, 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 Luton. And they were also, they played two legs. And they won. Frank Rolling scored a lot of goals. Um, I went to that game. One of my first ever ball of games. <laughs> We've got Durex there. Brilliant. Got a club call. That's a blast from the past. So we got uh, Wem um, Grimsby's road to Wembley. It doesn't really say in the same way Bournemouth's one was, so I much prefer the layout of Bournemouth's ones. See if there's anyone else that people might know. Mark Steen played for Chelsea before Bournemouth. He was a very good goal scorer. They've even spelled the goal the goal scorer in the final wrong as well. They've had a mare here. Uh, let's see. I did wonder whether that absolute. Rover's long gone now. Steve Fletcher has even got a stand name after him at Bournemouth. I think they've peaked too soon now because to name a stand after someone who, and I can say this because I went to see him quite a few times, wasn't a very good player. Maybe he's a legend, but he's not. He wasn't a good player. Now they could be signing superstars for all their money in there, you know, and they've gone and chosen a stand for Steve Fletcher. Archie Walker, we got a terrible advert there. We got some local places. Help me solicitor. We've even got the zoo in the cage. Oh my goodness me. Clubs from Bournemouth. They were absolute. You can't swear on YouTube, but S holes, they were. This was obviously just before my time. So we've got a bit about the players now. This is probably right there. Uh, John Bailey, have they forgot Eddie, Eddie Howe? I wonder. Well, I'm not sure Eddie Howe even gets a mention in this. Oh, that's a shame. The goalkeeper I should have mentioned as well. Jimmy Glass. I'm sure you guys remember him if you've got past an interest in football because two years after this in fact no the next season after this he became probably the most famous goalkeeper in, in England when he scored the last minute goal for Carlisle to keep him up in the football league Amazing to think that after this he was the next year he was absolutely famous and also he's going from one end of the country right to the other. So 
what happened for the football trust. Got the teams. I guess you tick who's playing. Interestingly, they've got the referee from Portsmouth, Bournemouth's rivals. That is a bit strange. You'd think they'd have it a bit more like neutral than that. It's really quite bizarre that they've chosen that. Just looking through the Grimsby team to see if there's anyone I recognise. I'm sure I've heard of Wayne Burnett. Maybe because he scored in the final, I'm not sure. And I've heard of Kingsley Black as well. So it's the um, Grimsby team. Yeah, Kingsley worked under Brian Clough and Ogham Forest after his 1.5 million move from Luton. So, yeah. There we go. This is Grimsby's route to, to Wembley. They won away to Chesterfield, home to Hull. Away to Scunthorpe. So they played more games than Bournemouth, or I just misread that. Um, they beat Blackpool, and then, to be fair, they won away to Burnley in the in the final. There's Frank Rowling, who's got quite a few goals. Kevin Donovan, gonna have Fawley and Mill there. about the two teams. So Kevin Donovan's got 15 goals. And for Bournemouth, Steve Fletcher's got 10. So I recognise any of these guys. So it seems to be the first half of this book was more towards Bournemouth, and this is more from Grimsby. Let's can you see black again. and Benini. Nice. This is the Football League squad. I don't even know what that is really. I think I've heard of J David Johnson. That's not Brennan Johnson's dad, is it? No, I don't know. Might be a different one. Soccer, PlayStation. So we've got an article about the charity man. 
much that's going on. That's who's in it. Angus Deaton, Chris Evans, Nick Berry, Todd Carty, John Leslie, Gary Lord, Ray Winston and Bradley Walsh. To be fair, that's quite good actually. We've got Tim Lovejoy, mm, Louis Emmerich, Paul Meyer, Coronation Street, Michael Neville, Matthew Marston and Phil Middlemiss. Ryan Conley, Jim Rosenthal. To be fair, there's some quite good ones there. Team managers are Goal Magazine's Andy Strickland and Helen Chamberlain's the manager. Game must have been on off before the game. I can't remember it though. Maybe it was saved and they built up at the start. Oh, there you go. It's only half an hour. I think I missed that to be fair. How do you know? I don't know. I can't remember. My memory fails me on that one. Transport information from for Wembley, which is notoriously difficult to get to. And then more auto in screen. So there we go. There's a program from 1998. Um, not a lot of nostalgia in the adverts, to be fair, but I hope you've enjoyed looking through it anyway. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.